Let us all rejoice in the Lord as we celebrate the feast day in honour of all the saints, at whose festival the angels rejoice and praise the Son of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You are very welcome today to the Feast of All Saints, the 1st of November. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all your saints, bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of the reconciliation with you for which we earnestly long. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the Apocalypse. I, John, saw another angel rising by the sun rises, carrying the seal of the living God. He called in a powerful voice to the four angels whose duty it was to devastate land and sea. Wait before you do any damage on land or at sea or to the trees until we have put the seal on the forests of the servants of our God. Then I heard how many were sealed, a hundred and forty-four thousand out of all the tribes of Israel. After that, I saw a huge number, impossible to count, of people from every nation, race, tribe, and language. They were standing in front of the throne and in front of the Lamb, dressed in white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They shouted aloud, Victory to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels who were standing in a circle around the throne, surrounding the elders and the four animals, prostrated themselves before the throne and touched the ground with their foreheads, worshipping God with these words, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honour and power and strength to our God forever and ever. Amen. One of the elders then spoke and asked me, Do you know who these people are dressed in white robes, and where have they come from? I answered him, 
You can tell me, my Lord. Then he said, These are the people who have been through the great persecution, and they have washed their robes white again in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Such are the men who seek your face, O Lord. The Lord's is the earth and its fullness, the world and all its peoples. It is he who set it on the seas, on the waters he made it firm. Such are the men who seek your face, O Lord. Who shall climb the mountain of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? The man with clean hands and pure heart, who desires not worthless things. Such are the men who seek your face, O Lord. He shall receive blessings from the Lord and reward from the God who saves him. Such are the men who seek him, seek the face of the God of Jacob. Such are the men who seek your face, O Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Think of the love that the Father has lavished on us by letting us be called God's children, and that is what we are. Because the world refused to acknowledge him, therefore it does not acknowledge us. My dear people, we are already the children of God, but what we are to be in the future has not yet been revealed. All we know is that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he really is. Surely, everyone who entertains this hope must purify himself, must try to be as pure as Christ. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up the hill, there he sat down and he was joined by his disciples. Then he began to speak. This is what he taught them. How happy are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy the gentle. They shall have the earth for their heritage. Happy those who mourn. They shall be comforted. Happy those who hunger and thirst for what is right. They shall be satisfied. Happy the merciful, they shall have mercy shown them. Happy the pure in heart, they shall see God. Happy the peacemakers, they shall be called children of God. Happy those who are persecuted in the cause of right, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And happy are you when people abuse you and persecute you and speak all kinds of calumny against you on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. A little boy was walking with his father along a country road. The night was clear, and the child was enthralled by the splendor of the sky, all lit up with twinkling stars from one end of the heavens to the other. After moments of reflection, he suddenly looked up to his father and said, Daddy, I was just thinking, if the outside of heaven is so beautiful, how wonderful must the inside be? It is by the way we live our lives on this side that our fate on the other side is decided. Scripture says that all the truth about us will be brought out in the law court of Christ and each will get what we deserve for the things we did in the body, good or bad. 
Now, I don't think the saints left anything to chance in this department. Saints are guided by the light of faith and reason in the big and the little decisions of life. For them, faith is not something penciled in for an hour on Sunday and then forgotten about for the rest of the week. Being part and parcel of their everyday lives, it informs all that they do and say and indeed are. Last night was Halloween. Now in pagan times it was regarded as a night of fear when demons roamed around to welcome the winter darkness. I know that kids will be restricted this year but I think it is unwise to send children out depicted as devils or vampires if, especially if they are unfamiliar with the lives of the saints who, as scripture says, had nothing to do with the futile works of darkness. That would be resurrecting the feast's pagan origins more Halloween than Halloween. It would be like celebrating Christmas purely as a winter festival with no reference to the Savior's birth. How sad that would be. Now, our faith forces us to combat the dark forces of this world, which it will include shady areas in our own lives as well. The saints were painfully aware of their own weaknesses, and they never pretended to be something that they weren't. They were no strangers to temptation, but they never gave up their efforts to grow closer to Christ. The saints are our heroes. We can't but be inspired by their lives of faith. So, I address the parents. As parents, instead of reading their children reading Harry Potter books, which have some dark, unsavory themes for kids, some even bordering on the occult, they should be encouraged to become familiar with the lives of the saints instead. Why not have it on your Christmas present list? As a young man, St. Ignatius Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits, was converted to Christ reading the lives of the saints while he was recovering on, bed, on his bed from a, a war wound. When we were at secondary school, one of the books on our recommended reading list was entitled Saints Are Not Sad. The impression, however, you get sometimes is that a saint is a forbidding kind of person, sort of joyless creature who has lost touch with the real world. They say that Saint Padre Pio, and most people are familiar with him, he only died in 1968, they say that Padre Pio the stigmatist, he had the wounds of Christ in his hands and side and feet. He had an impish sense of humour that lit up the lives of his confreres in the community. Not at all like the forbidding person he is sometimes portrayed as. Sainthood and sadness simply do not mix. The demons of Halloween are depicted as welcoming the darkness characterized by the onset of winter. But the saints adhere to Jesus, the life of the world, whom they now behold in glory.
Let us make our prayers to the God of our salvation, because all our hope rests in him. May we be inspired by the saints to live good holy lives as we journey towards our heavenly fatherland. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for all who suffer the ill effects of COVID-19. May the day draw closer when a vaccine can be found to combat this illness. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for those people, including children, who lost their lives so tragically whilst crossing the English Channel recently. May their families be consoled by the prayers and concerns of those who knew them. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the dying, especially among our relations and friends. May they find solace and peace as their mortal lives draw to a close. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all the faithful departed, particularly those among our relations and friends who died in the past year, and those whose anniversaries which occur around this time. May they enjoy the company of the saints in paradise. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray to Mary, Queen of all saints. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Now let us pause and pray for intentions of our own. The Healing Prayer Merciful God, come to the help of your people. Be our shelter in this time of peril and strengthen the bonds of our community. Bring healing to all who suffer the ravages of disease and assist those whose skill and art can put an end to this affliction. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May these offerings we bring in honour of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that, just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation through Christ our Lord. 
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise. Towards her, we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church through whom you give us in our frailty both strength and example. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and he gave it to the disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven.
Let us pray. As we adore you, O God, who alone are holy and wonderful in all your saints, we implore your grace so that coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.